The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Our top stories this week, a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, is done in the month of November. I worked on a novel, a science fiction novel I'm calling Best Effort. Uh, um, the goal of NaNoWriMo is to produce 50,000 new words in a month. I did not achieve that. I reached 30,000 uh, words. And that Some of them are terrible. A lot of them are need a lot of work. But really, it turns out that for me, the hard part is just getting enough plot out there, moving it along. You know, it's rewriting it I can definitely do and burying little hints and foreshadowings and forebodings and stuff like that I have confidence I can go back and do but if I don't actually get to the uh, the big events the big plot of twists and so on and so forth then they just don't get written so uh, whoops uh, that uh, well so uh, they're computing that I'm producing about a thousand words a day, which is what, about what I was uh, computing as well. At that rate, I'll be done on December 21st, but I'm not going to work at that rate. Uh, um, I got my 14-day uh, badge for updating. Uh, you know, I could have I could have updated with negative. I could have you know I, I think I could probably have updated with zero words, and it still would have given it to me. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, uh, it's funny though how you know completely meaningless little badges. You know you get invested in them and then they mean something. Uh, um, this is my own data uh, for the entire month of November and continuing on. I have now split my linear fit, so uh, we have 998 words a day for the month of November, and now December and on is being uh, done fit separately. My goal is 2,000 words a week on the novel Best Effort until it's done, or until volume one is done, or until some way that we can declare an ending and get, go back and then, you know, try to actually finish it, get get past a draft, date something that might actually be uh, something that could be circulated in, in some reasonable fashion. We'll see. Uh, uh, you know, so... On the bucket list, uh, uh, finish writing a novel. Cannot check that off. Uh, um, I haven't worked on writing day in and day out uh, like I did in November since I was finishing my dissertation in 1987. It's been quite a while uh, uh, and I'm sort of a different person the world's a different place everything is different uh, um, writing fiction is different it, it, I, it was very interesting experience uh, I feel like I learned a lot about how I work and how I can work steadily and so forth but it did not feel like I could just continue to do that when advancing the T2 tile project, getting to intertile, establishing 0.9 air, whatever it turns out to be. You see the number one item on the bucket list for me. Uh, um, and so forth, you know, I need to move that forward. So uh, uh, I'm pushing the uh, fiction writing uh, into the background a little bit, but I'm not going to give up on it because I absolutely want to finish something there. So that's NaNoWriMo. Uh, uh, the great refreshing that I talked about last week is, you know, say let, let's deal with all of the cleaning up and the stuff that I was trying to sweep under the rug by trying to sprint to the end. The sprint has turned into a bit of a marathon, so uh, uh, one of the biggest things was to upgrade to a newer version of uh, Linux, and I decided to make a new key master, and I was printing it in the, the red PETG. Uh, this is the first time we've made a case in PETG. All the other ones are PLA. Uh, once again, it's fine. It works good. Uh, you know, here it is. It hasn't got a screen on it. Uh, you know, I've got a screen just sitting here loose somewhere. Yeah, this is the uh, 
the red Keymaster screen, or at least it will be, uh, hopefully soon, uh, uh, because the newer version of Linux, we're nowhere close to being able to even light up the screen yet. That all has to be refigured out. Uh, uh, there, I've managed to get it plugged in with the serial cable, so you can see what's going on. Uh, um, Oh yeah, and so one of the other things I wanted to mention, as long as I was doing stuff in 3D printing design again, there had been an issue that I had a long time ago. So, you know, we've got these little feet, uh, uh, little feet, uh, that, that go on the bottom of these things. You remember these? And I made up a little wrench uh, uh, to go with them that fits over the feet. But the problem is, since then, we got these little, you know, plastic grids to cover up the uh, exposed solder pins on the bottom of the board, and now that makes it so that it's really difficult for the wrench to get flush enough to actually catch the threads. It's possible, but you have to really do it. So I said, well, what the heck, maybe we could go back and uh, invent a improved wrench specially for this purpose, so I'd spent a little time on that. Uh, uh, here's what the first thing I came up with. The key point, here it is as well, uh, the key point is that it's got these cutaways uh, around the wrench head to actually fit into the corresponding cutaways around the, uh, uh, I don't know what to call this, the, the back cover, I guess we'll call it the back cover. Uh, um, and that worked pretty well, uh, but now it meant that, so here, here's that, here, here's that little wrench with its little dings. So the, the only thing that's problem with that is that it, it ends up with the, uh, you know, the wrench has to stick off at a weird angle in, in order to do it, to clear the thing. And I said, well, geez, you know, what well, couldn't make it something even a little more custom designed for this purpose. So I kept on going, and so the idea is you, can, you could make a wrench that would just go right around that corner of the thing instead of going off in a big, long direction. We don't need a lot of leverage for this thing because we're going to strip the feet if we think we have leverage, so that's fine. Uh, so I printed some of them up, and... and uh, Okay, that's the, that's the next one, but let's take a quick look at this. So this is this is our the current version of the foot attaching and detaching wrench. Uh, uh, it has the same little cutaway uh, to fit in the thing, but now it, it goes over very nicely, and you just sort of hold on to it any way you like, and you can, I don't know if we can actually see this well, Trust me. Uh, uh, there you can see I'm, I'm, I'm turning it from the back. Uh, uh, it works very nice. It could be improved a little bit more, but it was fun to actually make a, <laughs> a little something uh, that just made my life easier instead of saying, okay, now we have to make up another story that makes my life harder. All right, so about uh, the progress on getting the new version of Linux going. I knew this was going to be, or I was anticipating this being a huge pain in the butt. Uh, uh, to some degree, it has been, although there's been one good aha that I finally got. So, uh, uh, yeah, act. <laughs> <laughs> I was digging through old files uh, in the last week. Uh, this is a bumper sticker that uh, one of my students uh, who took software engineering for me at UNM, uh, Nathan Rackley, who's a, a cartoonist and so forth, you know, <sighs> it's always difficult to see how people see you. Uh, 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 apparently that Ackley guy was not very happy. <laughs> Uh, um, anyway, doing stuff that people do, that's my slogan for what science is, but it applies to almost everything. It applies to software engineering. Uh, so the goal is to get to Debian 9.9 .9 2019 instead of Debian 8.7 from 2017 in the IOT, Internet of Things version. I hate that uh, uh, abbreviation. I hate the whole idea of Internet of Things, but here we are. Uh, uh, so the goal is to make a new micro SD card. I'm labeling it R for the refreshing. That's going to be the flasher that you got, we're going to plug into these things and it's going to burn itself in a new version. I tried using this startup disk maker that came with uh, Ubuntu to do the copying to the SD card just because I hadn't really refreshed my brain on how all this worked. And that got, uh, you sure you want to write it? Yeah, it will be writing disk image. And then it was like, wow, this is actually taking quite a while. So I started uh, looking around and trying to remind myself of the other issues. And the 
single issue that I was most worried about was this whole thing called U-Boot overlays. U-Boot is the universal bootloader. It's the thing that runs before Linux even boots. Uh, and the change from Linux 3.8 to Linux whatever the heck it is, 4.14, uh, on the ARM tile, on the on these TI Texas Instruments chips that are in the Beagle Bones, uh, um, is that it completely shifted how the uh, there's a thing called a device tree uh, that is how you describe the specific hardware you have on your little embedded computer because this is one of the things you have to deal with. Linux is being used on everything. Some things have a serial port, some things have two serial ports, and so forth. The uh, device tree is describes the hardware to Linux so it can figure out where to find things. Uh, uh, and the idea is, is you have layers of additional ones. So you have sort of common stuff and then you have stuff that's cu customized to your particular thing. So U-Boot uh, overlays changed from they used to be loaded by Linux to being loaded by U-Boot. That was terrifying to me because I'd never used U-Boot for anything. So I was reading about that. Uh, uh, the disk image was still getting written. I was playing some X meal, and okay, so it finally finished. Take the card and put it in the thing. Uh, um, and oops, and let's get over here. There we go. Push it in. Uh, yeah, and so you can see how the uh, the serial port connector actually blocks access to the SD card, even if you have the case off. So you really have to get into it uh, in order that you go. But it actually was booting up okay. And uh, then, you know, we're off to the races. There we have, you see, 4.14. 4 that's the new version that we're looking to uh, be using instead of 3.8. Uh, uh, but then uh, it was not actually working. You know, the first, I was trying to get the latest versions of all the files. Uh, uh, that turned out to be obviously just me being stupid because I hadn't plugged in the Ethernet cable. So then that was all right. Do the uh, upgrade, uh, you know, another 280 megabytes of archives. Uh, uh, so we do that. We reboot. Uh, the rebooting actually had a problem and it was recovering the date, the, the file system, which is not good. Uh, I think that was just a temporary thing. At the same time, I was looking, uh, in this Prue cookbook, Mark Yoder teaches, uh, courses at Rose Hallman, uh, um, in, uh, he teaches embedded systems and he uses Beagle Bones and he's pr he's produced this great thing, Prue. That's the program of real time units. That's the stuff that we're using for our six way communications throughout through the tiles. So I thought I could just it, take some of that. He's got a, he's got it all up on GitHub. I checked it out. At, you know, quick little examples. Just do this, do this. Get the LED to blink. Uh, uh, tried to do that and I realized no, I'm going nowhere until I get an Emacs installed. <laughs> On this, uh, uh, so I went and got Emacs going and so forth, and uh, uh, <clears throat> trying to figure out exactly how to do the whole U boot business. I had to, you know, start searching through my Google groups and my Gmail stuff, looking for Robert Nelson. Robert Nelson is the guy that if a bus hit, hit bus hits him, then the Beaglebone project <laughs> is in trouble because because he's the one that produces all the kernels and so forth. As far as I can tell, there's a few other people involved in the project, but he's the one that's in there the most. Uh, uh, and so you know things like this. I had similar problem with a BBG Beaglebone Green. That's what we have running 4.9. Had to revert to 3.8. We're talking about 4.14. That's later than 4.9, and so on. So issue after issue after issue, I will spare you the details uh, uh, I was you know trying to say okay how am I going to get this u-boot if I'm going to have to update the u-boot in order to use u-boot overlays what do I have to do with u-boot and uh, eventually I managed to say okay there it is you know and that u-boot 2017 that's the one that is on my actual uh, uh, tile the beagle bone green it's ancient and if that thing boots it doesn't know how to do u-boot overlays so it has to be updated uh, uh, so you know I messed around with it and I, I was turned out I was doing it all wrong because I was updating the bootloader on the SD card and not on the EMMC, not on the flash that is on the BeagleBone Green itself. So 
lost a lot of time in that, figuring out what's going on. I've updated this, updated that, and so forth. Uh, and the key there is, uh, I'll save you that story. Yeah, there it is. I, I was I was sending the output file to MMC block zero. That's the wrong one. It should have been MMC block one. Didn't hurt anything. It just didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish because MMC block zero is eight gig. What does that mean? It's the SD card because the EMMC on the BeagleBone Greens is only four gig. Uh, so I had to make it into a flasher, so it takes everything on the SD card, copies it to the, the thing, reboot it, uh, uh, set it up, the flashing happens, it all started working, it stopped, it started again, uh, uh, and we actually got as far as doing the big update of downloading all the zillions and zillions of packages. Uh, um, while that was happening, I was watching this uh, YouTube video by Peter Norvig that was recommended by uh, a curious reader who came into the Gitter and was pointing this out to me. It's actually an interesting uh, kind of talk. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link in the in the thing below. Uh, uh, it still comes from a sort of standard computational spin, but you know Peter Norvig's a great AI guy with a lot of experience working at Google and so forth. Uh, so he sort of worked his way towards getting. Uh, and this was the point of, of the curious reader who was bringing it up is that it reminded him of Robust First, and I can see where he was feeling that so yeah so the what is a data scientist and so forth uh, uh, eventually I got here and this is the end of the story for this week uh, got to actually building my kernel modules and they no longer compile uh, a variety of errors copy to user well that turned out to be easy to fix but there was a bunch of other things as well and so you know it's time to google them so copy to user under fine that well that turns out you just have to use a different uh, header file so I fix those already but the class adders pointer is long depreciated I, I love how people cannot keep deprecated and depreciated apart uh, um, is about to be removed so that is going to have to be rewritten I haven't figured out how to do that yet so that'll be going forward for the uh, coming week so uh, uh, that's the long and the short of it uh, some more interesting stuff from Peter Norvig from that same talk and so forth and and then the key idea I, I realize I do say and so forth too much I have to work on that Peter Norvig is ending up with the idea of you don't you shouldn't run an app you should have sort of an agent for you in the middle that does services for you which is very much in the micro computome spirit which is very much in the stuff that we're talking about in best ever the science fiction novel uh, and the stuff that I think the T2 tile is ultimately destined to be helping out with uh, uh, it's down the road but there we go all right this is running long so uh, I'll stop here <sighs> Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, we had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, I will see you next week. Thanks for being here.